لا إله إلا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أدى الأمان ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة فجازاه الله عنا خير ما جاز نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن دعوته all praises due to Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. May Allah's praise and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the seal of prophets. He had conveyed the message of Islam to the best of his ability and had shown us the straight path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clear in front of our eyes. And I ask Allah Almighty to make us among those who adhere to the message of our beloved Prophet and to make us among those who follow his footsteps and to make us among those who will drink from his hands on the day of judgment and to make us among those who will reside with him in the highest level of paradise al firdaus al a'la allahumma amin 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 ya ahbab rasulillah allah constantly reminds us with the concept of taqwa to be god conscious ya ayyuhalladhina amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wattaqullah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'malun sallu ala rasulillah allahumma salli wa sallim barak ala sayyidina muhammad some of you might be why there's media and stuff. Um, it's uh, many masajid across the, across the country are doing Salatul Ghaib or the funeral prayer on our dear beloved brother Muhammad Ali. And many media outlets are interested in, in covering that. But what I want to start with, and we'll come to that at the end, and that's befit of, as they say, the people champ. But the and it's a very ironic, subhanAllah, with all the Islamophobia that is taking place right now, that the most beloved American, the most beloved American, is a Muslim, and his name is Muhammad. The most beloved American today, and across the globe, is a Muslim, regardless of the Islamophobia is taking place. And his name is Muhammad. Sallu ala Rasulullah. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. For the sake of time. What I want to share with you, this is the first Friday of Ramadan. And what I want to share with you, and I know many of us, you know, I come to you from California, so we fast a little less than you do. Uh, like two hours less. You know, Fajr is 2.59, God Lord, right? And some other masjids, they have it at 2 a.m. But you fall for 18 degrees, right? And you break your fast at 9.06 or 9.07, so we have about an hour and 45 minutes difference or so. What I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, is many of us maybe approach this Ramadan, and maybe if it was shared before, my apologies, but maybe many of us that look at Ramadan, the attitude that we're approaching this blessed month, that it's going to have very long days, and we have very short time to enjoy food and our family and, and so on and so forth. And very and many of us, like we're thinking just how horrible sleeping will be because there's not much of it, right? Right, I mean, you finish Taraweeh here and probably Fajr's in two hours later, so why sleep? Just wait till you pray Fajr or so. So many of us think the long days, how I'm gonna be able to handle it at work? How I'm gonna be handle it uh, uh, if you're going to college and so on and so forth? Or it's gonna be hot, or is it gonna, I'm gonna be thirsty, I'm gonna be hungry, it's about attitude. Some of us received this month while we worried so much how hungry we're going to be, how difficult it's going to be, how long the night, you know, the, the prayer at night, and how much I'm going to spend money, and so on and so forth. And my recommendation to you, and myself, that if we just alter and change that attitude, because some of us are very delighted they're going to be fasting longer days because there's more reward in that. And some of us are eager to be praying Salat al-Isha and Taraweeh and so on and so forth because there's more reward in that. Some of us are very eager to reconnect with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. They're eager to do so. And that's a matter of attitude. It's a matter of that, you know, we're all going to be fasting this blessed month. Let me approach it in the best possible way because if I'm approaching it with the wrong attitude, it's going to be difficult. It is going to be hot. It's going to be long. It's going to be sleepless. But if I'm approaching it, this is a season of blessings, of Im immense amount of blessings, then that day won't seem as, as, as long. That prayer won't seem as long. 
that hunger and thirst won't seem as difficult because it's a matter of attitude. It's a matter of attitude. How are you approaching it? And let me say just one statement of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I hope that you adjust this attitude because that would be hopefully your goal during this blessed month. One time, and maybe you've heard me say this, this is a tradition of one of the statements he said, he, peace be upon him, it's an incident that happened with him. And hopefully that can reconnect us in what's our goal during this blessed month. Because if you're only worried about food and thirst and spending and parking and traffic, and, and, right, you might lose sight of that. One time, he, Prophet Muhammad he was about to give a sermon and he ascended the member. And every time he took a step, he said, Ameen. And it's something that he didn't do before. So three times, Ameen. Second step, Ameen. Third step, Ameen. So the companions, they're always, you know, they wanted to know what's, what's up, with, what, 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 what's new? Why did he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that? So they approached him and they asked him, Oh, Prophet of Allah, you've done something you've never done before. Why did you say Ameen? And he tells them what happened. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. He said that Jibreel came on to him. Inna Jibreel alayhi salam atani faqal. That Jibreel came to me and told me the following statements. من أدرك شهر رمضان فلم يغفر له فدخل النار فأبعده الله وفي رواية لم يغفر فدخل النار يعني he, he says that Jibreel came to me and said he told Prophet Muhammad while he's ascending the member so with the first step he said the one who witnesses the month of Ramadan sister if you witness the month of Ramadan and he or she doesn't get Allah's forgiveness won't get that forgiveness and they die and enter hellfire, they'll be distant from Allah's mercy. In another narration, they, they, they'll be, if they don't get Allah's forgiveness, they'll be distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهِ يعني He's distant from Allah's mercy. So the one who witnesses the month of Ramadan and doesn't get Allah's mercy, is this, is forgiveness, he's distant from Allah, Allah's mercy. And the second step, he said, I mean, then he told him, Sayyidina Jibreel is still Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And whoever his parents or her parents become of age, Adraka Abawai, and he or she don't serve them, could be both of them or one of them, and don't serve them properly, take care of them, and they die, they'll enter into hellfire and they'll be also distant from Allah's mercy. They become of age, not just dump them in any elderly place. You serve them, caring for them. And then he, peace be upon him, said, Ameen. He's following what Sayyidina Jibril is telling him. And then the third step, he said, and whoever hears your name and doesn't invoke peace and blessings on you, and they dial the enter her fire, they'll be also distant from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala What I want to focus on, brothers and sisters, is that first one. So the first one is whoever enters, whoever witnesses Ramadan and doesn't get Allah's mercy, forgiveness, I mean, he doesn't get Allah's forgiveness, he or she will be distant from Allah's mercy. Let me ask you, is that what you're embarking on? Is that your goal in this month? Is that what you want? Did you put that your goal or is how many iftars I'm going to have at the masjid or the community at this restaurant? Is that the number one goal objective that you have at work? You have OKRs, objectives and key results. Is that your objective? Is that what you want? You want to witness the month of Ramadan over how many chicken, chicken masalas you're going to eat? Or how many rak'ahs that you want to pray? Or is the objective that I want to get Allah's forgiveness in this month so I'm going to put my heart into this blessed month? So what, what is your priority during this blessed month? When you find it difficult to get up for Fajr, for the early morning prayer, you want Allah's forgiveness? What's the fuel is going to huh, incite you? It's going to push you to do what's good. When you're asked to give for the masjid or any other causes, what's the few, what's going to push you? You want Allah's forgiveness? Are you doing your best? 
Or you just want to be like every year a participant. And you get that participation award. Allah, I passed them. I, I was part of Ramadan. Participation award. Sawmul Umum, they call it. The general public, you just don't eat and don't drink all day long. But the tongue, the eye, the thinking, the practice, the behavior, it's not what Allah wants of us. Is that your objective? Is that your goal? So my, my advice to myself and you, brothers and sisters, is realign that attitude about approaching this blessed month or what's left of it and set your priorities right. And hopefully the priority is that we want to get Allah's forgiveness. And that should be also translated into our practices. Make sure, brothers and sisters, you're not worshipping Ramadan. You're worshipping Rabb Ramadan. You're not worshipping the month. This is a creation of Allah. We use it. It's used for us. It's, Allah has given us a season that there's rewards are, are, are like multi, multiplied many, many folds. Don't just come to the mosque only in Ramadan. And afterwards, before and after, you got nothing to do with it. Don't only pray or fast and not even pray during this blessed month. Make sure that you worship Rabbu Ramadan. When you want to come to Isha and Taraweeh, many of us see racing and doing double parkings and, and, and then like running and rushing. It's like, I want to catch Taraweeh prayer. I'm going to pause you until you know you don't want to catch Taraweeh prayer. What's more important that, that you catch Isha prayer? Because Isha is fard, mandatory. And Taraweeh, whether you pray it or not, you're not going to be sin. Yeah, that's not a sin. You know, actually, Prophet ﷺ, he didn't pray in congregation. So he's normal constituted that. Whether you pray 8 or 20, I'm not saying don't pray it. You should try your best, but do what's right first. What's mandatory for us. Set the priorities correct, right, that we worship God during this month. I'm doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because just Ramadan. I'm doing it for Allah. And I do what's mandatory first. Set that, align that priorities correctly. And I will mention two things for you and myself in terms of alignment, brothers and sisters, that we should focus on in terms of priorities. This month is blessed because the Quran was revealed in it. It's not Quran, you know, it's not the other way around. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi. Huh? Al Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month that was, was Quran is revealed. So there's extra emphasis on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan. Of course, we focus on it before Ramadan and after Ramadan, but there's extra emphasis. And he, Prophet Muhammad sallam, used to review it. And before his death, he reviewed it twice with Sayyidina Jibreel in the month of Ramadan. Many of the scholars will leave any other kind of sciences and focus on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month. My thing to you, brothers and sisters, is I know many of us focus on quantity over quality during this month. How many rakahs? I'm going to finish the Quran twice, thrice, four times. My appeal to you, my appeal to you, is how many verses you understood during this blessed month. You know, for every, when you see smoke, means there is fire. Allah says about those who recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, taqsha'irru. He says that you will have goosebumps. Your heart will be soft. You know, I rarely now, you pray taraweeh, isha. We rarely hear the imam or the ma'mumin cry. One time I bought a new tape. I know for the younger generation, this is, I'm talking about, I, I know, I have to define what that is. A Quran tape, this is like old technology. And I played it, and while it's playing the, if you can turn that off, inshallah. The, the tape paused. So I was like, okay, another defective, you know, product. So I kind of like, but then I hear them. I'm <coughs> I was like, oh, oh man, it's it's a bad tape. So I'm kind of upset. But then I realized that the tape wasn't defective. 
is the reciter who's actually, he came across verses that touched his heart about, I think, heaven and hellfire, and he couldn't recite. So he was crying, and he couldn't utter the words. The tape wasn't defective. You know what was defective? It was this. It was this. It was this heart that is defective. Because if we're listening to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're not engaged, you know, Sheikh Salah Sultan, one of our teachers, I was traveling in San Diego. May Allah release him. He's in prison in, 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 in Egypt right now because he's speaking the truth. May Allah relieve him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen? Ameen. One time, you know, he was traveling and he told us, he was reciting Quran and re just reading in the plane. And the lady, when he's done, he put his Quran away. Then the lady next to him said, you know, what were you doing? He said, I'm reciting the book of Allah, our, our scripture, the Holy Quran. And she said, can you do more? She didn't understand Arabic. She d he did. So that lady, she started crying. Just the impact, the impact of the words of Allah. And she told him, where can I get one? He said, take mine. He, she said, no. I know now how valuable this is. I have to buy my own. Hmm? I have to get my own. Quantity, brothers, quality over quantity. How many of us will take one verse, contemplate upon it during this blessed month? Don't worry about how many rakahs you're praying or how many you just, but how many of it is really impacting you and me? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hopefully that you take it seriously and pay attention to that. Set the priorities right. Second priority that I want to you to convey to yourself and myself during this blessed month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the verses that he speaks about Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan and fasting and the rules and so on and so forth. There's an interject right there. There's an interjection where he speaks of وَإِذَا سَلَكَ and, and he tells Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم فَإِذَا سَلَكَ عَنِّي عِبَادِي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أعوذ بالله الشطر الرجيم فَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ where, he saw, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if my servant asks about me, I am near. I answer the call of the one who calls me. Huh? What's interesting about this verse, you know, I, I was, last week I was playing soccer with my fr friend, friends, and then after we're done, we're, that's it, we're not going to play again in the month of Ramadan. We play like late. And then my friend said, you know, Brother Munir, make dua for us. You know, you're closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was like, how? Like, am, am I like on higher ground than you are? Many of us have this because we feel that we're not as practicing or we feel distant that someone else has to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Pray. I want to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Prophet Muhammad, if my servants ask of me, he didn't tell him, say I'm near. He said, I'm near. Don't put bar barriers between you and Allah. During this month, especially while you're fasting, because that's a prime time to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what it is, because Allah said, it's not the one who keeps asking about me. He said, if my servant asks once, Sa'alaka, I'm near. And look at the continuation. I answer the call of the caller. One time. You know, even Satan, when Allah, you know, dictated that he's going to be outcasted from heaven, what did he do? Do you know what he did? You know, he made dua. He asked Allah. He supplicated. He, he asked Allah because he knows he can't grant him that. To give him the ability to cause mischief. But he knows, he did it sincerely. And Allah granted him that. During this month, brothers and sisters, when you are in the state of sujood, ask Allah for what you want. Ask Him for guidance. Ask Him to help the people across the globe. Ask Him for what you want out of this life. And keep in mind, what's your goal out of this month? Do you want forgiveness? Ask for that. Is that your objective? 
It's not how many, because someone's like, I don't know how to supplicate and make dua. One companion asked Prophet Muhammad that. And he told him, you know, أنا لا أحسن دندنتك. I can't say it the way you say it, like nice rhythms and stuff. He said, what do you ask Allah? He said, I ask him for heaven and stay away from hellfire. He says, he saw some said, وَحَوْلُهَا نُدَنْدِنْ Prophet told him, that's what we, at the end of the day, that's what we ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. We want to enter into heaven and be saved from hellfire. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who realize the blessing of this month. And refocus our attitude and refocus our energy into being, you know, get the quality out of quantity from this month. And focus with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and make sure among, we be among those who ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness from this month. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمٌ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الذي اصطفى سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be praised. We thank him for all the blessings that he is bestowing upon us and we send peace and blessings on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Ahbab Rasulillah. As I mentioned, I know many of us are coming late. This is the first Friday of Ramadan. And it happens to be that right now there is the memorial service of a great icon in the African, American, Muslim, one of the greatest icons in our time. And that's Brother Muhammad Ali. And there is many, many things that we can learn from this great man. Many, many, many things that we can learn from him. From his life, maybe some of us can associate with him. And we are going to do Salat al-Ghaib. We are going to perform the funeral prayer after, after we're done with Salat al-Jum'ah. Maybe some of us don't know who he is. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the khutbah, it's ironic that the most beloved American. It's not a basketball player. It's not an actor or actress. It's not a politician. The most beloved American in the world. His name is Muhammad. And he's Muslim. Because he was a great ambassador of this faith. He's a great ambassador of America. But he's someone with principle. And subhanAllah that his steadfastness at young age let that he's beloved and you know commemorated after his death at old age of course he was recognized but after his death that we should realize when we be our people of principle that legacy lasts that he was at the height of you know what do you call it fame and money and game boxing was the biggest sport in the world back in the 60s and 70s and he gave that up when he was asked to be, to be part of the Vietnam War, and he said, no, my principles say, no, I won't be participating in killing more people or poor people. I won't do that. Even though they're not going to take him to the war zone. They're going to have him more just, actually, the, the, the comments say, he'll be here going around to the troops, entertaining them, and so on and so forth, boxing and, and, and not doing much of, of, of war activities. But he was a principled man, and he said, I will not do that. And he was stripped of his title. And he was actually sentenced. And he was spoke ill of all the media outlets right now speaking, they're praising Muhammad Ali. Back then they were speaking ill of, the, of him. As some of the reports say, all, more than 90% of America was hitting him because he spoke, you know, that the truth. He was something looked down upon. But with time, America came along and recognized the greatness and the prin this principled man. He was a good, not only, as one of the brothers said. I'm not just praising Muhammad Ali because of how many men he knocked down in the ring, but how many souls he lifted up outside the ring. He was an icon for African Americans. 
who back in the day, you know, he used to say, what? I'm African and proud? No, I'm African and pretty. Because back then, they will not associate Africans with being pretty. But that brought hope to whole generation from our African-American brothers and sisters, Muslim or not. When he was asked at the height of his, you know, his, his fame, so what are you going to do after boxing? Look from Islamic perspective, da'wah perspective. What are you going to do? I'm going to be ready. Look at this month. What is this month? Is, is the should we should think of reflective of this. What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to prepare to meet God. I'm going to prepare myself to meet God. He used his fame. He used his, his strength. To serve humanity. And I want to end with a couple things from him. Some great things that you, we should reflect on. So you think when you make dua for him in the Salat al-Janazah. You know he said. You know, you know he had Parkinson's disease. So he had an ability to move and speak. So one of the statements he said. Because he used to say I'm the greatest. Right? He's the fastest. He's the baddest. And he used to be very eloquent. And he said something along the lines that God tested me with my movements and my speech to show me that I'm not the greatest. He is the greatest. He is the greatest. So he's a man of principle, of faith, of conviction. And subhanAllah, in his death, he's showing a good example of Islam and Muslims. That when he said, you're going to do memorial for me, make sure you start with recitation of the Qur'an. Make sure that uh, my burial according to the Islamic tradition. So that's someone we should pray for. And someone we should make dua for and supplicate. Because he's definitely an icon. He served not only the Muslim community, the greater community. The hostages that he released from Saddam Hussein's the first war. 1991, 15 hostages. When they came to him afterwards to thank him, said, you don't need to thank me. Thank God, Lord, you, you don't, I don't owe you anything. That's a duty, I don't owe you anything. And that's something, someone we should reflect on. These two icons between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X, there's a lot of history and heritage that we should reflect on and learn from. And I ask Allah Almighty to make it. I know I'm a few minutes over. But it's worth it. To reflect upon the life of this man. And his death. And I'll end with. We're all going to face this moment brothers and sisters. we all. What legacy are you going to leave behind? What legacy are you going to leave behind? Are you going to leave a legacy? Like Muhammad Ali, he was giving him that fame. You know, in Hollywood, they have these stars they put on the floor. He said, in 2002, he said, I, will accept, I won't accept it if you put it on the floor. You have to put it on the wall. He said, why? He said, because I bear the name of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa And I will not allow people to walk on that. Said it publicly. And subhanAllah, today, the most beloved name American person is Muhammad. Muhammad Ali. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and may he rest in peace inshallah. Oh Allah, we ask you to bless this community. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us among those who are relieved, freed from hellfire during this blessed month, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to be a beacon of light for all humanity, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us among those who are forgiven during blessed month. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us among those who reconnect with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us among those who are from utaqa min al-nar, freed from hellfire this, during this blessed month. Oh Allah, we ask you to help us and enable us to help those who are less fortunate across the globe, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah masturna fawq al-ard, wa tahta al-ard, wa yawm al-ard alayka, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Waj'al khayra ayyamina yawma liqaika, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahu wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa aqim al-salah. Shaykh Nabil, if you can come, inshallah.